Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 39. Today we're going to be talking about render arrays in Drupal 7. As always, I'm Shane. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3 or you can go to codekarate.com, check out my other posts and videos and sign up for the Code Karate newsletter. So render arrays. If you're anything like me, you maybe have worked on some Drupal 6 modules or Drupal 6 websites and you're very familiar with how to output straight HTML using a just a simple function from either hook menu or maybe in a block. But what render arrays are they're a replacement to the standard outputting of just straight HTML. And you should definitely go to this page on Drupal.org if you're not familiar with render arrays to learn a little bit more because it's very detailed. It walks you through why you should use them, you know, why was it done, that type of thing. It's node 930760 on Drupal.org. I'll go over just a real quick summary and I'm going to show you a quick example and then we're going to get out of here. So render arrays. Basically it allows you instead of outputting just a string with HTML, it allows you to output just a standard Drupal structured array with specific elements or items in that array. So if you go down here it tells you why it was done. And one of the reasons, or the main reason, is because you could alter things using hook form alter in Drupal 6, but you couldn't really alter what was showing up on the page. So with renderable arrays it allows you to use hook page alter to change the layout or content of the page right before it gets output. So if you look, it's a, this is the example down here that I'm going to show you so you can see it in action and you can of course read these things. It goes through on the bottom and it tells you the different types of properties. So there's a type property, markup, and it says that's the simplest property you can use. We'll show an example with that. Uh, there's a theme function and in the next episode I'm going to go over hook theme and how to create custom templates within a custom module. So this is kind of the getting started before that. But you can call a theme function whether it's a Drupal theme function or a custom theme function from one of your modules. You can have theme wrappers which would be an array of theme hooks. And we'll just go from there. We'll start with a quick example. So as you can see down here I have a very simple module I just called it my example and I'm going to use this module in the next episode or two to go over just different theming or hook theme type examples within a module also I have my module page and this is pretty much taken almost exactly from here with just a few minor modifications but so you can grab that on your own as well but we'll go through it here we, we have our standard hook menu which just defines a page is called my page HTML gives it a title uh, the callback and it just sets the access callback to true which means everyone will be able to go ahead and access this URL we also created a my page renderable where we're going to show an example of a renderable array and gave it a title a callback and allowed everyone to access that as well and our first callback function, this is the mypage-html. It's going to go ahead and create a variable, print out a simple paragraph tag, and it's going to then create a simple list that has a first item, second item, and third item in it. At the end of it, it's going to return the output. This is going to look very familiar to how you probably have built things in Drupal 6 and in, I know it looks familiar for me using a single variable and just adding on strings of HTML to it until you get to the end and you go ahead and return it. So that's the first. We'll go ahead and take a look at that. So I'll go to my page HTML on our Drupal site. If you'll notice I'll swing in here and show you that I already turned the module on. So I have the my example module. I turned it on. Go ahead and go to my page HTML and you'll see my title is my page with HTML style function and it has the paragraph tag and it has the three items. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second option. If you go into my page renderable. So what this is going to be is it's going to use just a renderable array 
and this is probably the most one of the most basic examples you can get but at least it gives you an idea of how it can be used to build uh, a complex layout with this function so it has one variable output and it's an array and it's just a structured nested array the first item in the array went ahead and called it first underscore para we could have called that anything we wanted but that's what we decided to call it here and it's an array of type markup which markup just means it's going to be simple HTML in this HTML we have a paragraph tag that's going to get spit out that says a paragraph tag about some stuff immediately following that we have another item of the array called second para and this one's going to have an items item in the array and it has first item second item and third item and then it's going to use the Drupal theme function item list so then it's going to output these as a unordered list so we'll go ahead and come back and try this page and you'll notice it's almost completely identical but it's two very different ways to get the same results so you notice if I flip back and forth it's almost completely identical if you look here you'll notice it's just a very simple unordered list if we go here you'll notice that it's basically the same thing but there are a few extra classes on it because Drupal using that theme function gives it a this item list class and adds a first and a last class to the list but besides that they're virtually identical but what you get with this second option is you get the ability to then use as specified here if needed you can use this hook page alter to change the layout or content of the page at the last minute so you know in all honesty you may not need this if you're building a one-off simple module for some site just as you know a simple one page but if you're going to be building a module that may need to be reused at some point or that you're going to want to use on multiple sites using a renderable array adds a lot of flexibility if you ever need to come in and change it without having to actually modify the output or the HTML in the module itself so go ahead and go over this renderable array documentation tomorrow we're gonna go over a hook theme implementation and how to use some theme functions and template files within a module that's it for this time on the daily dose of Drupal and I will be back again tomorrow thanks for watching